15 Reasons Why Princess Anne Should Be the Next Queen. Who says the norms cannot be changed? The life of the Princess Royal shows us that we can be trailblazers in our own right while also living within the boundaries of propriety. Princess Anne, the only daughter of the late Queen Elizabeth II, is a blast of fresh air when compared to some other members of the royal family. With her dignified and conservative attitude, she's won the hearts of many and has shown us the lifestyle of a true royal is not fulfilled by fame, but by intentional service to humanity. Months before Queen Elizabeth II's death, several individuals shared their opinions on a poll, indicating their desire for the consideration of Princess Anne as the next queen. A study of her lifestyle leaves no doubt about why such opinions were developed. Keep watching to discover 15 reasons why Princess Anne should be the next queen. 1. Competent After decades of lifelong service to the crown, Princess Anne has accrued a lot of experience and connections that are beneficial to the crown. She's been the anchor of the royal family since she matured into her royal duties. Recently titled The Most Hardworking Royal, a title she's held five times, with a total of 214 royal engagements in 2022 alone at the noble age of 72. Her interests cover sports, science, and improving the health of individuals in developing countries. It's no mystery that Princess Anne has played the princess role for a very long time. It wouldn't be a stretch for her to easily step into the role of queen. Number 2. Reliable Based on the number of royals who have stepped down from their duties, the word reliable isn't exactly the first word that comes to mind. However, Princess Anne has shown that she's cut from a different cloth. Her activities with the royal family around the world tell us that she shares similar traits with her parents, who esteemed and honored their service to the kingdom. Her honorary title as the most hardworking royal in 2015, 2016, 2018, 2021, and 2022 respectively indicates that she has a heart of gold and a very strong work ethic. It also says that this senior royal is not afraid to get the job done, regardless of the circumstances. A recent example is when she accompanied the Queen's Coffin from Balmoral Palace through Edinburgh and finally to its final location. In addition, Princess Anne, alongside King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla, were privileged to see Queen Elizabeth II in her final moments on Earth. Princess Anne was tasked with the official registration of her mother's death. Number 3. Charitable As a lower-ranking member of the royal family, Princess Anne supports over 300 charities and organizations and also performs official duties on behalf of the king. One of her top charities is Save the Children UK, where she's been the president since her early 20s. In typical old-fashioned English style, Princess Anne goes about her work without any care for the paparazzi. The Princess Royal traveled around the world at least three times and visited America and other locations on official assignments last year alone. Unfortunately, the media only records less than half of her exploits. With the exposure and authority that comes with being the ruling monarch, one can only imagine the number of causes that will benefit from her proposed elevated status. Number 4. Commitment In a world where commitment seems to be a fleeting attribute, the Princess Royal's giving a detailed description of commitment to the general public. In an interview with BBC on her 60th and 70th birthday anniversaries respectively, she was asked if her retirement time was approaching. In response, she replied that she will follow in the footsteps of her parents and support the crown and monarchy to the best of her ability. In an interview with Vanity Fair, she said, It's not about getting a tick in the box for doing a task. No, it was about service to humanity. This is the mindset of Princess Anne, who says it came about from watching her parents, Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, work and saw how they valued service to humanity. Number 5 athletic. 
The Princess Royal shares a similar trait with her mother. They both love animals, horses and dogs in particular, and are proud equestrians. Her father, Prince Philip, once said, if it doesn't fart or eat hay, she's not interested. In 1976, Princess Anne accompanied the British equestrian team to compete in the Montreal Olympic Games, thereby creating a record as the first British royal to participate in the Olympics. Unfortunately, she suffered a fall during a course because goodwill, the Queen's horse could not jump over a hurdle, but handled the situation efficiently and quickly and got back to the race. Some people might laugh at Princess Anne's fall, but accomplished equestrians know that it takes years of discipline, hard work, and diligence to become an accomplished equestrian, a laudable position that the Princess Royal's proud to hold. Since the leader of the British monarchy needs to be a strong individual, both physically and mentally, this particular trait will come in handy. Number 6. Efficiency While many individuals would reduce their workload as they grow older, the Princess Royal does not relent on her work. She takes on engagements and completes tasks with grace befitting a British royal. In the space of four years, 2016 to 2019 specifically, she had a total of 1,945 engagements, covering diverse spheres of society. Her 1,945 record indicates that she completed at least two engagements each day for 365 days. In July 2022, Princess Anne had a total of 36 engagements to attend, a feat she intended to achieve by attending multiple engagements in a day. Like any fully employed UK citizen, she worked for 21 days all through July. That's an impressive feat. Princess Anne did not develop her efficiency streak recently. In her younger years, she reportedly attended five to six engagements every other day, therefore indicating a proficient level of efficiency in doing her tasks and living her best life. Number 7. Self-Reliant With this particular royal wearing the crown, we wouldn't have to worry about individuals serving her at every turn. Her efficiency is so profound that it crosses the threshold of self-reliance. Many individuals around the globe are under the notion that royalty cannot be bothered with mundane activities like driving and cooking. Well, the Princess Royal debunked this theory. Princess Anne drives to appointments herself and has been on the wrong end of the law as she broke speed regulations on multiple occasions to meet her scheduled engagements. Also, don't be shocked if the princess has a hands-on approach to cooking. A rare picture of her younger self standing beside Prince Philip as they cooked on the barbecue was shared on the internet. It would seem that family time meant that no staff were allowed to work. Her self-reliance shines through once again in Anne, the Princess Royal at 70, where she expressed her shock at how long it took the crew of the crown to recreate her hairstyle for Doherty, a task she completes in 10 to 15 minutes. Quick random question. Which princess fixes her own hair? You know the answer. Number 8. Fidelity The traits of Princess Anne described above tells anyone watching that she's lived her life in the most exemplary show of fidelity to family and the crown. Although in her youth, she allegedly snapped at a reporter saying, I did not ask to be a princess, and in later years proceeded to describe her life with the analogy of a goldfish in a bowl she ensures that her actions bring only honor to the crown. Her words, mannerisms, and actions have always reflected a deep sense of loyalty to everyone and everything she holds dear. As the Princess Royal, Princess Anne is not afraid to rebuff and give her disapproval to anyone who doesn't honor the crown or the dynamics of the British monarchy. No wonder members of the press are afraid of this woman. Talk about being faithful with a capital F. A reported account of Princess Anne's loyalty will not be complete without mentioning her heartfelt tribute to her late father. She honored the Duke of Edinburgh in an interview with ITV News and redefined our view of Prince Philip. She also shed some light on the life and legacy of Prince Philip. While Prince Philip was the butt of some jokes and was not as loved as Queen Elizabeth II, 
Princess Anne defended her father. Among her statements to ITV, she said, There's not many people who understood just how broad his interests were and how supportive he was to an astonishingly wide range of organizations. His perspective was really important. The Bond fathers and their daughter Cher has always been deep, but language expert Judy James sees more than a daughter's love in Princess Anne's interview. According to her, Princess Anne's tone did not only indicate her love for her father as a daughter, but also her admiration as a strong fan. Number 9. Respectful Princess Anne lives by the rules guiding the notable members of the royal family. Her interactions with the general public have always been with grace, warmth, and respect. As someone who values proper moral conduct, respect is one of her defining qualities. One memorable instance where the people praised her for her conduct and respect was during the late Queen's funeral. She wore a ceremonial naval military uniform and stood with her brothers at Westminster Abbey. Her final deep curtsy to Queen Elizabeth II as the late Queen was carried to her final resting place at the Holyrood House gives credence to her respect. While some may mistake some of her actions as disrespect, we assure you that disrespect is far from the Princess Royal's mind. One instance of assumed disrespect was the refusal of Princess Anne to greet former U.S. President Donald Trump. A more accurate account states that Queen Elizabeth II looked at her daughter to know if more dignitaries were coming after Trump, which incited a shrug from the princess, followed by an it's just me comment. In addition, the British royal family is a stickler for protocol. The queen would not break protocol and make her daughter greet someone if it was not on the schedule. Also, the video shows Princess Anne socializing with other world leaders which people assumed was a conversation about Trump and was not the case at all. Number 10. Mostly Scandal-Free Much to the chagrin of Queen Elizabeth II, members of the royal family have always been involved in various forms of scandal at different times. Princess Anne has tried her best to stay out of the scandal sheets. Unfortunately, she made headlines by being the first royal to divorce her spouse in 1992 the year Queen Elizabeth II would eventually describe as the Annus Horribilis, a Latin word for a horrible year. After the fiasco of her divorce from Captain Mark Anthony, she passed the scandal baton to her brothers. She proceeded to live a private life, and very little is known of her except what she chooses to disclose. The scandal of divorce compared to other illicit acts from other royals seems like child's play, especially when you discover that the reason for the divorce was infidelity on the part of Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony's actions led to the birth of an illegitimate child, which he refused to claim. Who in their right mind could blame her for leaving that situation? Despite the scandal, Princess Anne conducted herself in a manner befitting the Queen of England. Number 11. Education Gone are the days when the higher echelons of British nobility bred their daughters for marriage rather than allowing them to pursue intellectual interests. Princess Anne had a governess in her early life. She followed the steps of her mother and aunt to socialize with other children at the first Buckingham Palace Company, a girl guide company formed in 1959. In 1963, she proceeded to a boarding school at the Benedin School in Kent. Five years later, Princess Anne graduated from the all-girls boarding school with six CGE O-levels and three A-levels in English, history, and politics. This made her the first royal to get an A-level in politics. In 1969, she proceeded to carry out royal duties actively, but her education extends beyond the classroom, as she's well-versed in leadership roles and other sections of modern society. We dare say she would make a splendid queen. Number 12. Reject Titles Every young lady from childhood was conditioned to believe the life of a princess was the ideal life, a complete fairy tale. While the actions and life of Princess Anne may indicate that those young ladies believed a lie, anyone in a leadership position ensures that the best interest of their subordinates and dependents is kept. Since the Princess Royal's description of herself as a goldfish in a bowl, one might be led to believe she didn't like her position as a princess. 
that she saw it as a burden and didn't want to put that burden on her children. She did not give her children royal titles. She once said, We can all agree that there are also downsides to having a title. And her daughter Zara voiced pleasure at not being given one. According to Zara, she's had an almost normal childhood and has taken to adulthood in the same manner. The women born into the royal family have a strong affinity for horses and equestrian activities. Princess Anne, who often detested how people appreciated her title rather than her equestrian accomplishments, would be happy to know Zara did not have the same experience. What mother would not be happy to see her daughter reach her goal despite the pressures of society and the added pressures of being a part of the British royal family? Since her children are so far down the line of succession, she believed it was only fair they enjoyed their lives without the excessive attention the media gives titled royals. Peter Phillips and Zara Tyndall certainly value their mother's forethought. Number 13. Quick Wit and Sense of Humor Princess Anne's most popular trait is her wit and waspish mouth, which she inherited from her father, Prince Philip. However, her sense of humor was from Queen Elizabeth II. In her youth, the media dubbed her as her royal rudeness because of her sharp comebacks and blatant disapproval of the press. You can't blame the princess for disliking the ones who have a field day trying to smear the royal family's name in the mud. On the other hand, she's used her humor to diffuse awkward moments, like when a moderator introduced her as the Prince of Wales. Her wit and humor helped her to sabotage a kidnap attempt and delighted those listening at the banter between mother and daughter on a video conference call in 2020. We can't forget Princess Anne's amusement when she and her sister-in-law Camilla discovered they wore similar outfits to attend St. Mary Magdalene Church at Sandringham. Also, anyone who has a nice sense of humor appreciates a prank or two. Princess Anne is no different. She once gifted King Charles a toilet seat as a Christmas present. Number 14. Her Journey to Remarry as the head of the Church of England, Queen Elizabeth II was expected to uphold the ordinances of the church. Since the church did not entirely approve of divorce, the royals were restricted in their choices of spouses and their marriage prospects. This controversial issue cost many royals and their children a place in the succession line. For example, the former King of England, Edward VIII, had to abdicate the throne and renounce his descendants' right to the throne because he desired to marry a two-time divorcee in Wallace Simpson. Also, Princess Margaret, Queen Elizabeth II's sister, could not marry her first love, Philip Townsend, because he was also a divorcee. So how did Princess Anne remarry since she was a divorcee? Well, at the time, her brother, then Prince Charles, had sired his heir and spare. So it was unlikely the throne would be hers since an old rule allowed female royals on the throne only after the death of their male counterparts. Fortunately, this rule was amended in 2013, but it only affected females born after 2011. Since the Anglican Church would not accept her proposal to remarry, Princess Anne and Timothy Lawrence tied the knot at a church in Scotland. What a smart way to evade protocol! Number 15. Her Personality Princess Anne's strong sense of morality would ensure the United Kingdom and other countries of the common realms are ruled with good judgment. What is judgment without mercy, you say? Princess Anne's big heart and sensitive nature would be her greatest tool as she wields the swords of justice and mercy. As a leader, her ability to dissolve awkward moments with humor will come in handy. She would not have a problem correcting those who are wrong, since she's never been one for media attention and as a fan of traditional British ways, we're sure Princess Anne would go about her work efficiently with minimal interference from the press and media. Princess Anne's ability to be a good judge of character is another added advantage. Do you have any other reasons why Princess Anne should be the next queen of the UK? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and click the notification button on your screen. And as always, thanks for watching.